Do I have a mic on? Good morning. It's 11 o'clock and they want me to give you the updated news here. So um, I know we like to visit everybody. So um, I'm just gonna give you some announcements and, and just get started. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I wanna welcome any guests that may come in. And if, if there is a guest that comes in after we start the announcements, if you would um, let them know that at the Welcome Center, we do have a wonderful gift for them for visiting our church for the very first time. So if you see somebody come in and you don't know them and say, is this your first time here? Take them over to the Welcome Center and get them a special gift for their visit. Also, don't forget to sign the pew pads. That's how we know you're here and any information. Definitely, if you're not on the prayer chain, put your email there and you will be added to the prayer chain. Tomorrow, this is very important. Tomorrow, there is a called administrative board meeting at seven o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, this is the last meeting that we have before conference and we for our disaffiliation. So this is the last update for us to hear what's gonna happen uh, before we go to conference. And talking about that, <coughs> excuse me, this morning God laid something on my heart. Uh, I've been going to conference for 20 years and at the commissioning ceremony the, for, the, for the new pastors, for the new ordained elders, they always place a red stole around their neck when they're being commissioned. They, they get a red stole because normally it falls that Pentecost is after the annual conference and they want their new elders to have the red stole so they can preach their first uh, Pentecost service in their church that they've been assigned to. And the fact that Pentecost is today rather than after our conference, I just think that's a sign that we're going to have a new church. This is the birth of the church, and we're going to be birthing a new church come after. <laughs> and God just laid that on my heart, and I just thought about that. So please take that and, and continue to pray for our three delegates as they go to the conference. and. Uh, and just keep them prayed up the whole time. So that's from June 9th to June 11th. And it should be online that you can also watch the conference online. Also, <coughs> excuse me, on, <coughs> on June 7th is a, uh, from one o'clock to 4.30 is our new Forget-Me-Nots program is, is uh, coming up again. And for the elderly, it's a respite program. For those that have a loved one that needs some extra extra care uh, every Tuesday and for them to have a time of respite for themselves. So Forget Me Not starts this Tuesday. Tuesday night is our quarterly meeting with uh, Christians United. It's at uh, Beulah Baptist Church. It's one of our African American churches. And they, it is always a pleasure and a joy to go to an African-American church. Our pastor is doing the benediction. If you go, make sure that you take a couple extra dollars with you because if they take up an offering and they don't like it, they'll take it up again. So um, just take a couple extra dollars with you. They'll, they'll pass the plate twice. Actually, they don't pass the plate. You actually get up and you walk. You march <laughs> and you put your offering in, and if they don't like it, they have you march again. So, um, so take a couple extra dollars with you. It's, it's always a lot of fun. Uh, Wednesday night is the last um, night for our families to get together. Our Adam and Eve class and our youth and and our children. They're taking off for the summer and giving everybody their own kind of respite and vacation time. And then we announced it Thursday was our last Thursday service uh, this past Thursday. So we're taking off the month of June and we'll come back and the first uh, Thursday of July and start our Thursday service again. Um, vacation Bible school, a couple weeks ago, Melinda came up and said that it's not out of the budget, that they, it's gonna be about $3,000. She has been fully funded for Vacation Bible School. Can we give God a clap offering for that? Absolutely. Now, she is still in need of helpers. 
So if you think that you can help, Vacation Bible School starts the week of June 20th. So if you think you can help in some area, please call the office and talk to Melinda because she does need air, uh, helpers in different areas of, of Vacation Bible School. And next Sunday at 2 o'clock, there is a required mandated meeting in the fellowship hall for all of those who are helping to work vacation Bible school. So whatever your position is, and if you for some reason thought you couldn't work vacation Bible school and between now and next Sunday, you think, oh, I do, I can work, go to that meeting and just go to the meeting at two o'clock and Melinda will plug you in someplace, okay? Um, <clears throat> that's all of the announcements that I have um, for right now. And we're going to invite John Taylor up to uh, give us his announcement about next week. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, most of you know, I think all of you know, that we have the Agape security team that uh, uh, is here every Sunday and during most of our programs. And uh, we're going to have a training session next Sunday. Uh, I got I corrected Eddie. Told him was, I told him he was in the dark, and I'm in the dark. I thought it was the following Sunday, but we're going to do it next Sunday. And what is going? We're going to show you a video here in a minute. But uh, we want to let you know that we have security teams out in the narthex that uh, watch people come in, and we see, if they see something that, that isn't right, they approach that person and talk to them, see you know what they're here for, other than just coming to uh, be. I uh, heard uh, Eddie's uh, sermons or just be here with God. And sometimes people just, they're crazy people out there in our world. And our world's upside down right now. But uh, what we do, and we're gonna show you this video. This video took place in Texas. And it was in a church similar to ours. And it almost was set up like our church. And as you'll notice in the video, you'll see some action over on the left side, which would be over on the left side over here. But just watch the video because there was a shooting and uh, we're going to show you what happened. Then I'm going to uh, explain to you what we would like you to do to keep you safe. Go ahead. And you see the moving up in the top left corner? There's a man up there. Okay, well, that individual is going to pull a gun out. There he goes. And he, he shot once. And the man in the back was a security guard, and he took the, the individual out. Now, stop right there. See what people are doing? They're, they're laying down like they're supposed to. That's what we would like you to do if you're capable, if able to. Some people have got some medical problems that couldn't, but we want you to get down as low as you can get down. Lay down in the pews. Lay down there. Don't stand up. And uh, if you stand up, it's just going to cause some problems for our safety team. Our safety team is going to uh, take the, the uh, individual out. It's, we Hopefully this doesn't happen, but it has happened, so we've got to be ready for it. And we would appreciate everybody next Sunday to take part of this training because it, it's going to save lives if we have to do it. Uh, can you run that again? I want, you to I want to show again if he's going to uh, do his dastardly thing up there. He, I don't know how he even got through here with, into that church, but here he goes. He's going to shoot it. Okay, now keep running it because I want you to see what happens here. See that person trying to get up? Well, this guy laying down in the white shirt, he ends up standing up. But if you just stay there, stay, stay down because then our, see how the security team's moving in? And that's, that's what we would like you to do. Just the next guy's getting up trying to run out. But, but uh, the tendency would be you would just want to get away from everything. Well, just stay here and we'll keep you safe. So just stay down in the pew until we give you the clearance sign. And I appreciate everybody's help. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. We're so thankful to have our safety team, and uh, we, we apologize that we even have to bring these issues up. I know it makes us all uncomfortable, but you have seen on you know, the church looks just like ours that uh, these things are happening. There were shootings last night at different areas, different locations throughout our country, and especially the most recent you've seen in the news with the uh, children at the school. And so praise God for the safety team. And uh, we will work through that next week. And uh, I believe it's God's will for us to be prepared. Amen.
Amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and ask that uh, Matthew uh, plays our prelude at this time and that we open the altar and I'll move the prayer request right before the prayer time and light the candles that symbolize the lighting of Christ Jesus. You're welcome to come to the altar or make the place where you are a place of prayer. Can we all say amen? amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather in worship, to celebrate your holy name. What a sacred Sunday for communion as well as Pentecost. Guide us in this time that we share together, and may all of God's children say, you may remain seated for our call to worship and then stand for our first hymn of praise. If you will all stand and join us for our hymn of praise this morning, we'll turn to page 539, if I got that number right, and we'll sing the first, second, and fourth verses of O Spirit of the Living God.
Let us remain standing. Join with me the Apostles' Creed either on, your, on the screen or in your hymnal on 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth to the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence ye have come judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So good seeing all of you in red and especially the choir. You look beautiful. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, we turn to our prayer concerns on the opposite side of your bulletin if you have the opportunity there. Um, every month, the first Sunday of the month, we try to remember to mention to be in prayer for our grieving class. This meets on the first um, Tuesday of each month, also the third Tuesday. Uh, at 5 o'clock in the chapel from our Stephen ministers. And it's just such a great help to so many folks for the community as well as the church. Uh, we want to be in prayer for our dear friends at the beach. We have 100 plus uh, members of our church that took communion at 10 o'clock on the beach uh, at Ormond Beach on the coast. And so we pray for them and their travels as they come back tonight and tomorrow as well. For our prayer concerns, we ask that you uh, be in prayer for Kathy Sanders. Her surgery has been moved to the 16th, that you would be in prayer for Paul Fata. His wife, Lorraine, was one of our cashiers uh, at the thrift store for a good while, a number of years. And Paul's facing cancer surgery, very difficult, his esophagus and his jaw. So if you can keep him in your prayers. Tom Metcalf is still in the rehab in Kansas. Uh, one of our new Stephen ministers, so keep him lifted up. Leela Evers and Wanda Cox have been in the hospital this past week. Ken Rowe had his exploratory surgery and probably looking at more surgery a little bit later on. Howard Adams uh, had a successful pacemaker uh, put in. Uh, and Alice Gillette has come home from the hospital, but then her husband called us yesterday and said that he now has COVID. So if you can keep Al and Alice Gillette in your prayers. And then, of course, uh, annual conference that is right in front of us um, to be in prayer. And hopefully most of you, if not all of you, will be at our meeting tomorrow night to get an update and to pray over the delegates going uh, to annual conference and the different issues that are being lifted up. So if you'll hold these in your hands, I'll ask Miss Sherry to lead us in prayer uh, at this time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you on this beautiful day, this day that we call Pentecost, the day that the church has been birthed. So, Father, we know that as we go through this week and, and uh, hopefully by the end of next week, we will, we will know that we know that we know that we have made the right decision, that you have been supporting us in this entire process and that we will birth a new church. So Father, just be with our delegates, be with our pastor and our two lay delegates as they go to conference, as their families support them, we support them in prayer. Father, we just, we just know that you will put a hedge of protection around our delegation and that they know that they're in the minority and that they're gonna face fierce dissension 
So, Father, we just ask you to, to give them a, a, a confidence, to be strong and courageous, but the confidence to know that they're, that they're right, that we are doing the right thing because you have said this is the way it is. Father, we lift up those that are on our prayer list in our bulletin, and Father, those that have been especially lifted up to you. Lord, we know that before they even come off the tip of our tongue, that you already know who we're, who we're thinking about and who we're praying about. You have already handled it, and so, Father, we're going to thank you in advance for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us and the ones that have yet to come. We trust you and we claim your promises. You said that you would never leave us or forsake us, that you are fair and just. You said that you would walk us through the valley. And Father, we know that there is a mountaintop experience awaiting us very soon. So Father, we thank you in advance for that. Lord, we ask you to be with those that are suffering from cancer, those that are having upcoming surgeries that have been in the hospital or in our hospice houses, in our rehabs. Father, we ask you to be with them as they step over that threshold that from the comfort of their home into the, into the hands of those that are going to help them get well. So, Father, we just thank you for, for doctors and nurses and first responders that they will take care of our loved ones when those moments that we can't be with them. Lord, we just ask you to continue to bless our pastor and his family, lift him up, give him, give him the full armor of God as he just goes next week into this conference. He knows that he is facing some battles and that he is going to win the battle. So Father, we just thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for this meal that is before us that we will take in just a few minutes. Something so ordinary, and you can make it extraordinary. And so, Lord, we're just looking forward to this, this wonderful meal where we can, we can connect with you, that you have called us to take it as often as we can and remember what it is. So at this time, Father, we lift up those joys, those praise reports, and those sorrows that we have on the tip of our tongue and in, the, in our minds and on our hearts, and we lift all of these up to you. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers, our joys, and our sorrows. And that we know that you are taking care of it. We know that you are a just God. You play no favoritism. And everything is even at the foot of the cross. So this time, let us not only pray the prayers, but let us sing the joys and the praise that you have taught it, your disciples through him, the Lord's Prayer. <laughs>
now, if you'll please stand for the reading of the Holy Word. Our Pentecost message this morning is Romans 8, verses 14 to 17. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Let us remain standing. As you know, our tradition is to sing the doxology. They will be bringing the offering forward as we sing these praises to God. But there will be plates at the close of the service by the exit doors where you can also drop in the receptacles your communion cups. At the end of the service, prayer requests as well as offerings can be made after the service also. May we sing together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these offerings today in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Can we all say amen? Amen. Thank you, June, Miss Cindy, and choir. That was wonderful. Praise the Lord. We are also excited in our sea of red that uh, Paul Teagan has um, brought his membership here. Paul, stand for a minute so we can recognize you. Brag's a brand new member in the Lord. 
Remain standing, Paul. Father, we ask your blessings to be upon Paul and his dear family. We're so glad that their home is right here with us. And may all of God's people say... Anytime a person has a transfer uh, membership, we like to recognize them uh, in the presence of the Lord in the community of believers, and we're very delighted to have Paul and his family here with us. I also want to um, give a special thanks. Uh, the last weekend was our uh, vacation, our family, and we stuck around the house most of the time. Uh, we ended up doing that very relaxing and uh, knowing that Miss Sherry, our certified lay minister, was making sure everything was uh, pulling together. She does such a tremendous job, and I'm so delighted. Uh, it made me feel good to know that she could pull that together and the different speakers we had last week, so I want to thank them as well. Can we put our hands together and thank Sherry and the others? Amen. Now, I am so excited uh, to share with you something wonderful before we do our communion message today. Our Staff Parish Relations Committee, which is the folks, the committee in charge of all staff, including the pastoral staff, and our Finance Committee, uh, and our leadership team, which is all the chairpersons of the different administrative areas of the church, have voted unanimously, unanimously to bring on staff an assistant minister, uh, Justin Wheeler. So Justin's up here with me, so I want to recognize Justin. Justin is going to give the C of our ABCs in our communion message today. He's done that at the 8 and 9.30 service and just done a tremendous job. We're all in love with him. He's been a part of our praise team leading us for the last couple of years, very active on the Wednesday night Adam and Eve class, and um, just, just an amazing young man. I'm so excited about that. I want to give you a few bullet points about Justin's ministry, uh, and then we'll get into the message. Uh, we have not had an, an assistant, a ministerial assistant, uh, in a number of years now since Miss Debbie Wright uh, has left us. Our budget today, because of COVID, does not really bring us back up to that point, really, to be able to do that. But these three different committees feel that now is the time uh, to reach out to our community as we're making these new endeavors. And we know that God is going to provide for us. We know that. Um, I had a dream um, about two months ago, and God spoke to me directly in the dream. I have um, I, I've never had one of those, not had one since. But he told me to go fishing. And uh, as I prayed about that, I realized it was to be a fisher of men. And, uh, and then he said, Hope Sound. And uh, I thought, where in the world is Hope Sound? I woke up in the middle of the night. I didn't know if that's the name of a community or somewhere in Florida or somewhere around the country. Or I really had no idea. Many of you may know the place. Um, so when I got up, I Googled my phone and found it. And it's about three hours south uh, here, south of us, and it's on the coast. And um, so I thought maybe I'm supposed to go catch a fish and maybe there'll be a million dollars in there. <laughs> I didn't know. And just began to ask around, sharing different individuals about the dream. I knew that God was trying to say something and uh, realized in that process that it was to be a fisher of men and what the Lord was saying. I shared that in our Adam and Eve class, the midweek worship service, our younger families. And um, when I said that, Justin waved his hand, and he said, well, you know, that's where my Bible school is. Justin is in his four-year uh, program of, of Bible school to get his B.A., and um, he is uh, in his third year, finishing up his third year, and is all online, and um, it is in Hope Sound. And I thought, whoa, now is that not interesting, you know? And then everything began to come together as I shared with him. I have been meeting with Justin for a little over a year, uh, semi-regularly, and Dale Burns praying, and God just uh, brought us together. But I never caught Hope Sound. I, like I said, I just never picked that up at all. And um, I just know that he is here for us. Now, he will help me tremendously pastorally, uh, especially just for a day off during the week. We just we have not had that for a while just because it's always on call. But besides that, the outreach outreach into the community. And this is the time to do it. As Sherry said, birthing a new church, this is the time to reach out into the, the youth and the young folks, the teenagers, the young uh, folks in their 20s and, and folks that are down and out and just everybody else as well, pastorally here, 
take care in, of us. And so this is just the right time. If you would like to be a part of that financially, anytime you can put at the bottom of your check, ministerial assistant or assistant minister will be his title, and we will usher that in. So we are very excited. Today's his first day, and uh, you'll see how wonderful he is. He has preached at the 930 before uh, for us, and you'll get the C of the ABCs today. Once again, can we all say amen? Amen. amen. Well, let me just give you a few words in preparation for communion, the A and the B of the ABCs. Of course, this is Pentecost, as we all know, and this comes from a Greek word, pentecoste. The penta means 50th, coste means day, 50th day after Passover in the uh, Jewish celebration. And everybody would gather there. Uh, because they were bringing in the fruit of their labors. Uh, they were an agrarian society. They were bringing in some of the first fruit of their crops, and they would give thanks to God. It was a sacrifice of praise. They had uh, different types of wave offerings, very symbolical, but they would bring in some crops just to let the Lord know how much uh, they appreciate what He had done for them. It's a beautiful service of, of celebration. People would come from all over. It spoke many different languages, which leads into our moment of Pentecost. It was a, a regular holy day for the Jewish community. Again, 50 days after Passover, which, of course, for us, Passover is our Easter. This is where you know, Christianity came, the Last Supper, uh, Maundy Thursday, and then Easter service. So it's 50 days from Easter in our celebration. We were red to symbolize the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the power of God that fell in the book of Acts, chapter 2, gives its history. Now, the scripture we're using today in our lectionary is actually how to be led by this Holy Spirit that came in Acts, chapter 2. They were so filled with the power of God. Filled with the Spirit of God, it said it was like flames of fire upon their foreheads or upon the top of their heads. And there were 120 of them gathered in there. And many people from all over were, were looking at them and they were wondering, you know, what, what's going on? These people were so filled with the Spirit, they were speaking in a heavenly language. Just amazing. And, but there was always some in the crowd and they said, well, they've just been drinking. That's what the problem is. There's always somebody that's got the naysayer, the negative, right, on there. Uh, but then Peter stands up, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit. The man that was afraid in so many previous stories has a boldness now. And he preaches the Word of God so much that when he finishes, the results, the comments is, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized. 3,000 joined the church that day. Can you say amen? amen. 3,000, and it continued to grow and is growing even today. The A of our ABCs now is just the simple verb in that first sentence there in the passage, are you led by the Spirit? If you are led by the Spirit, you are no longer under bondage of fear. Are you led by the Spirit? That's a good question for me looking at that passage. I've turned a, a mandate into a question. Are you led by the Spirit? What does that even mean? Let's take a couple stories real briefly around this Pentecost experience. I can tell you what it means not to be led by the Spirit. In a biblical story in the book of Acts chapter 5, we have the story of Ananias and Sapphira that lost their lives because they lied to the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you remember that story or not, but the, the presence of God was moving in such a powerful way that many people were selling all they had and giving their possessions to the church so that they could take care of the needs of the people around them. It was just a beautiful thing. It was not a mandate. A lot of people didn't do that, but a lot of people did. And that's the introduction to Barnabas, one of the great leaders in the New Testament. He sold all he had and brought it to the offering to the, uh, to the leadership of the church there. Ananias and Sapphira, for whatever reason, it doesn't dig deep in the Scriptures, but it must be selfish reasons. They lied to the Holy Spirit because Peter said, you're saying you sold everything you had and you've given it all to us. And it appears that they're kind of looking around like, yes, we did that. And he said, but you didn't, you, you didn't. And you're not lying to us, you're lying to God. You're lying to the Holy Spirit. And destruction came into their family. And so everybody was caught in awe, as you can imagine, at that period of time. There's no doubt that's a way not to be led by the Spirit of God. If it's for selfish gain, it's obviously not for the presence of God. Now, what would it mean, just on the opposite side, that you might be led by the Spirit of God? Well, if you've been with us week to week, uh, either in here or online, 
We talked just a few weeks ago, and I think Ray Horn spoke about it in his message, of the concept in Acts chapter 16, where the Apostle Paul on his missionary journey wanted to stay in Asia, but the Holy Spirit was leading him to Macedonia or to the European provinces. And God had all kinds of things to, to venture out into that particular realm. And so in that process there, he was being led by the Spirit. It seemed like the Spirit was pushing him one way and pulling him another, you see. And God's Holy Spirit is that way. Well, how do we know if it's the Spirit tugging and pulling uh, or maybe it's a voice from the past? Maybe your dad or your mom or your grandma or your grand, uh, grandmother. I mean, how do you know it's the Spirit of God? Well, I think there's some basic ways to know that. Um, you all know that I love acronyms, so I've got the acronym today, RIB. Maybe some of you are going to have ribs for lunch. I know you should have fried chicken, but maybe you're going to have ribs. The R stands for repent. You know, the scriptures are very clear that if we are going to be obedient, that's when the Holy Spirit is going to come upon us. And part of the teachings of the scriptures is very clear that we need to repent of our sins. That's what happened at Pentecost. What must we do to be saved, Peter? Peter said, repent and be baptized. One of the problems of the Christian movement today is people are trying to come to Jesus without repenting. You see, because they don't see Jesus as transforming them. They see Jesus as just trying to make their, their life, whether it's miserable or whether it's okay, a little bit better. But according to the scriptures, we are to repent, and God wants to transform us. He does love us just as we are, there's no doubt about that. He loves us even in our sin. He died for us while we were yet sinners. But that doesn't mean He does not want to transform us, that He wants to deliver us. If you've got a tremendous struggle in your life, please don't give up on God. I believe in my heart that the Scriptures teach that God wants to transform your life and deliver you. Can you all say amen? Amen. Now, the eye of rib would be intercede, be prayer warriors. I pray that you pray hard this week for our annual conference and for other areas, for areas in our country, areas maybe in your family. And you might say, well, I, whenever I feel led of the Lord, I, I, that's how I am. I pray. Well, I'm going to encourage you to put down some times, kind of to stretch your comfort zone, even if that's not your normal style, because I guarantee you if you put down 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, you're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will be right there with you. That's being led as well by the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to encourage you to do that so that you can just pray like you've never prayed before. And then the B of our word rib is the Bible. I'm going to challenge you to read the Bible this week, to read Acts chapter 2. This is Pentecost. The story of Pentecost is found in the book of Acts chapter 2. Read it a couple times. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you and guide you and direct you. Can we all say amen? amen. Now the B of our ABCs. You're no longer called to bondage or to be a slave to sin anymore, a slave to fear anymore. 1 John 4, 18, perfect love casteth out all fear. The opposite, friends, of, of, of love is not hate. The opposite is fear, and fear produces hate. A famous pastor said one time, and I think that is so, so true. God wants to, to make our darkness daytime. He wants to turn on the light. Turn on the light so that you can see and feel the presence of Almighty God. I was watching a program the other night, and somebody was saying, well, how do you have this good feeling inside of you? I don't understand that. And the person said, well, do you ever step in a room that's dark and you feel a little nervous because it's dark and then somebody turns on the light? How does that make you feel? It makes me feel good, safe. He said, that's, that's what I'm talking about. God wants to bring light into our darkness. And I found two stories as I was praying in the Spirit that I know the Lord wants me to share with you. The first one is Mary Magdalene. Oh, my goodness gracious, what a story of how a woman filled with demons was transformed. God didn't leave her alone. He didn't band-aid it. He didn't just say, it'll be okay, you can cope. He didn't do it like that. He transformed her. He delivered her from the demons. And it was Mary Magdalene that was the first evangelist. She's at the tomb early to embalm the body of Jesus. And she's the first one to see the stone rolled away. 
And she runs, this first evangelist, to tell the good news to Peter and John. They come running to the tomb and see that, that Jesus is gone, is resurrected. And Mary stands outside, you remember well, and weeping. She doesn't even recognize that Jesus, his first appearance in his resurrected form is to Mary. She, he appears to her, and when he says her name, that's when she recognizes who he is. And she just begins to worship him as her Lord and Savior. He took her darkness and made it into day. The second one is that great hymn, Amazing Grace, that you're all familiar with. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. I just felt led to research that hymn. I know many of you know the story. Maybe you've seen the movie but it did me good to look at it again, to read the story of John Newton in the 1700s and the history of his life and how destructive that it was and how that he uh, was a, 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 a carried slaves uh, from the other lands over here and brutal, just terrible for many, many years, evil in the way that they treated them. And then he had a miracle. He cried out to God because the ship was in disarray that he was on and it was going to sink. The um, storm had caused a hole in the hull of the ship. And as he cried out to God, all of a sudden the cargo shifted, according to him writing later, and it jammed against the, the break, the opening, and somehow sealed, <laughs> that's impossible, but somehow sealed the ship and it was able to make it into a harbor. That transformed his life. If you've got somebody you're praying for and you say, I, you know, they're just so bad, I don't even think I can. Think of John Newton and think about a miracle because he had folks praying for him back uh, in England. He had folks praying. And so this put him on the journey. And in that journey, he realized how terrible it was to be bringing these slaves and the way that he and others treated them and what happened in their lives. So he began to, in his conversion, begin to write uh, letters and information and literary uh, prose, writing different articles about slavery. And they got to William Wilberforce that was in the parliament in, in Britain at the time. Others were doing the same thing. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, was doing the same thing. And those are the people that actually gave the power, the force, the inspiration to Wilberforce to hold the line. And in 1807, there was the abolishment of slavery in Britain. Can you say amen? amen? Would not have happened if it had not been a miracle. Would not have happened, Amazing Grace, that wonderful hymn, if he had not cried out. There's something about crying out to God, to God, and, and God does something. God does something. We're not called to bondage. We're called to deliverance. Justin is going to give us the closing of our sermon, the C of our ABCs, about crying out to God our Father. Justin, if you'd come, please. Good morning. I'd like to start off with it's a, a pleasure to have the honor to come on staff at this church that has, I've, the service, of course, we go to has been the contemporary service, but I know that the heart in this church is likewise across all services and the opening up of love on me and on my family. And it will be an honor and privilege to serve you and serve the Lord. And it will also be an honor to be a Aaron or a her to help lift up our pastor's arms and give him the support he needs or be a Joshua that's out there in the front line in the battle. Uh, I've realized through my life, God has given me in my 38 years a multifaceted ability and I know full and well he's going to use it for his honor and glory. Amen. Cry out, Abba, Father. In my studies of this phrase, cry out, Abba, Father, I uh, opened up the Bible. Imagine that, because it's right there in verse 15. And it talks about the Spirit causing us to cry out. And that, uh, that is, is a witness to us. So if you look up the word Abba in your Bible, there's a footnote there, and that word, as it clearly says, is Aramaic for father. And I was like, okay, that's great. Father, 
father. All right, Paul, what, what's going on here? Father, father. Well, I started doing a little bit more digging into what Abba means. And to this day, Hebrew children use the word Abba to distinguish their earthly father. It is a common name that they would use. It's a very familiar term, one that we might use the words daddy, papa, dad, whatever, you know, pops. Um, I'd mentioned in uh, the earlier service that Patty, uh, Miss Patty Potts sends out the, the, the prayer list, the prayer chain out, and if you scroll down to her, her sharing a little devotional at the bottom, she always puts in there papa. And it, it just shows that, that relationship that that there's not really this divide that we look, as we look through the Old Testament, we, we seem to feel that there is this divide, that, that God is in this tent, that he resides in that holy of holies. And that's what the, the Jews at that point, they had that sense, that feeling, there's this divide. And Paul's really trying to, you know, cut that down, cut that away. And he's using this term, Abba. The, the Jews have when they would use the word father, they would, might venture to use the word Jehovah. But more often than not, they would still use the word Lord, which I tr would try to pronounce it in their language, but I'm not going to do that. I will just use the English term Lord. So simplify that. So I got to thinking then about this term Abba, about father, very common term. I use it, I call it my dad all the time little word of information on my history. I am a preacher's son, so I never planned on being up on a pulpit. God had other things in mind. My father has a very, very, he has many other ministers. If, if you find something good that somebody else is doing, you give them credit for it long enough and until it becomes yours, and then you use it. And one of his ministers in ministerial school had shared with him, and then he went to share this to people that would come into the church. You are never a stranger in your father's house. And that stuck with me. That stuck with me many times. I've always kept that in here. But it came a little bit more to light as I read in this scripture. That that father's house is Abba. Not, not some sort of separation, not something that's, that, that I cannot grasp that is just beyond me, but a God that wants to commune with me, just like my father here on earth wants to talk with me. I call him up all the time. Poor guy. I mean, he'll be in the middle of something. He has his Monday is his kind of day of rest after ministering. Uh, I, I found out after my first sermon, the, the drain, that, that the preaching the word of the Lord, the, the drain it, it, was, it was almost as if I, I come from manual labor, working in construction, and, and the drain of that, of just the, the weight of sharing the word, was almost more, you know, wearing out than, than a day's work in the construction field. So I always call my dad on Monday, even though that's his, his day of rest, because I have that, that commonality, that familiarity that I can just call him at any point, at any point. And... Keeping that in mind, I can go into my father's house. I can step in, open up the cabinets. What do I want to eat? Grab it, open the fridge. There is no separation between me and my earthly father. Just like when you are saved and you give your life to God and you, as Pastor Eddie, so it, it is a thing that I have realized more and more that you have to repent of your sins. You turn away. Repentance, turning away, turning towards God. I am no longer a part of the world. I am God's child. And thankfully, the blood of Jesus covers us so that then the Father can look upon us. All of our sins are covered. So now we have the boldness, the ability to approach the throne. Not approach the throne as if it is a God that sits up there as the Greek gods and all that, something that is beyond, something that we cannot relate with, someone that we cannot talk to, but we can approach the throne 
as if that is our Abba, our Papa, sitting on there. Whenever I also researched on Abba, there are two other places in the New Testament where the word Abba, Father, is contained. One is in Galatians, where it is used almost as a mirror image of it is, as it is used in Romans. But then again, if, then if we go into Mark, we see that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the weight of what he is about to have to face on that cross is on him, and he goes off by himself and prays, Abba, Father, I know you can take this. I know, you're, I know you're amazing and can take this away from me, but not my will, but your will be done. I have a sneaky suspicion that in all those many times that as you read through the Bible where Jesus is trying to sneak away early in the morning to get his private time, that whenever he goes into that private time, he's not saying to an unattainable father, he is saying, Abba, Father, Papa. And all those times, he's talking to a common, relatable individual. And I believe that we need to bring that into our lives. That he is attainable, always attainable, always right there with us. Always preparing, as I said, that food. As I said, I went to my father's house and I can go and eat. We have the food that has been prepared here by the father, the communion. What he has over the years back in, in the creation where, where we could walk through the garden with him of an evening. He's wanting to eat at the table and dine with us, and he welcomes us to come and eat at the table. I had shared in the 11 o'clock service, and I, God had brought it to me then and didn't bring it to me at the 8 a.m., but that the disciples, uh, if, after he talks about breaking the bread and that the body, whenever you do this, do this often, do it in remembrance of me. So then again, after we see the resurrection, we find the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And they come across Jesus, and they don't have a clue who he is. They don't recognize him. They, they don't have that, that commonality, that connection at that time. And, and Jesus is sharing them with knowledge and all that at that point. And he's getting ready to go on. And they said, why don't you come and eat with us? Why don't you come and eat with us? And whenever they sit down and at that moment when they break the bread, when they break the bread with Jesus, that they recognize him, that their eyes are open, that they see Jesus, they are able to have that connection. That veil is gone. We can have that veil broken in our lives if we but open our hearts to Abba Father and speak to him like our daddy and come and share in the supper that he has prepared for us. We're going to love this guy, are we not? <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I have never looked in depth with that word Abba, especially at the Garden of Gethsemane, and tying that in to the Lord's Supper. That was beautiful, beautiful. Our communion is open to everyone. You do not have to be a member, official member of this church. We only ask that you come seeking Jesus. Maybe somebody here is going to be Jesus for the very first time. If you're at home online watching us or worshiping with us, we encourage you uh, to find a wafer and uh, uh, some juice and participate with us in this very special moment together. We're going to receive communion in a few moments and have you go back to your seats with the chalice. Uh, we do want everybody to come forward. If you can't, we'll take it out to you, and then we'll all take it together. If you do come forward, any monies that are left on the altar rail will go to our discretionary fund to help out folks in our community, if you would like. We always begin with singing One Heart Together. So I'm going to ask the choir and Miss June and Cindy if they will lead us, uh, or Matt, if they will lead us for this One Heart, please. You may remain seated.
would like to give you a chance to participate with us through our liturgy. And we will only be sharing the great thanksgiving. It'll be on the screen. And when I lift my hands, you will know it's time to respond. Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up your, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we said, communion is open to all. We're going to ask that folks come down the center aisles. We have two ushers to direct you today to come. And as you come down the center aisles, you're welcome to stand or kneel at the altar for just a moment uh, if you would like, and then return to your seats. But do not open the cup until we are all back at the seats together. We're going to begin, Bill, if you will, with the sides. We want this side as well to begin. Come on this side here and move your way around. Uh, Ray and Monty and Beverly, if y'all will come on the sides, and uh, they're going to come around, and we'll go ahead and have them coming through. Okay, I'll just hold on just a second here. We apologize for the confusion there. Y'all just come. That's be the best thing. <laughs> That's good. There we go. open. If there's anyone here that cannot come forward, we'll be more than glad to bring the sacrament to you. If you need the gluten-free, please request those as you come.
Daryl, if you'll go ahead and direct that side to come, if they will. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, folks, for your patience. We're just learning how to do this again. You're very kind. Thank you, stewards. right over here. Jewel, if you'll raise your hand. Did you get this? Did she get it? Over there. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Carol. Have all the choir you said has theirs? Thank you. As they're bringing the communion trays back forward, if you will take the cup. The first layer of plastic, of course, uncovers the body of Christ. Representing his life, his teachings, everything about him is broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. Second layer of plastic is the cup of the new covenant. It represents his blood, his life flow being poured out for all of us. Take and drink and remember the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for these precious moments that we have together. May your Holy Spirit guide and lead and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. A reminder that you can drop these in the receptacles by the door when you exit. Also, the idea of the offering plates are there as well for your prayer concerns. The prayer wall we have, as well as our prayer prayers and prayer quilts. We try to mention at the end of our services each and every Sunday. May we rise together for our closing hymn of worship. If you'll join me for our hymn of benediction on page 347, we'll do the first and second verses of the Spirit song.
And now may the God of peace, the God of love, and the God of mercy come and fill us with his Holy Spirit. Now may his Holy Spirit walk behind you to, to guard your back, walk in front of you to guard your heart, walk beside you and dwell within you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. May you be seated for our closing and our postlude and the extinguishing of our candles. Justin and I exiting to the back to greet each and every one of you. Brother Matthew. Let us arise and go into the mission field.